awesome. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I saw a, a little preview of this this morning, and um, this might be a horrible mistake. Uh, we're going to play around with some skateboards now. How many people skateboard in here? Yeah, how many people think it would be, good to, be a good idea to put a motor on there? Yeah. Turns out your mom was right. This is a bad idea. Um, all right, let's give these guys a big hand. <laughs> Hello, how's it going? Um, so yeah, uh, I'm Richo, this is Mike. Thanks Richo. You're welcome. Uh, Richo works for Stripe. Shit, go on. And, all right, whatever. Uh, I'm Richo, I work for a company called Stripe. Uh, I do security type things for them. Uh, I'm a duck enthusiast, I ran a conference one time. Um, uh, uh, so I work for eBay and uh, I really like Bluetooth, and wireless, uh, wireless stuff, wireless exploitation. And uh, yeah, I'm occasionally the voice of reason sometimes. So like, uh, why, why did we do this to ourselves? Um, I mean, the thing that first made me think like, I'm gonna buy an electric skateboard. Uh, I live in San Francisco, which is tiny, uh, so I can kind of like skate around everywhere and save a bunch of money on Uber, like this is now paid for itself. Uh, it's also basically impossible to get stolen because I can just take it with me into a bar. Um, and I mean, we kind of looked at it, uh, like the, the Kickstarter was pretty huge for Boosted and we thought, this ought to be good, like, maybe, maybe we should be the first ones to, to have a good poke at it. So, yeah, I mean, like, maybe to hacks it. Um, I mean, like, why hacks it? Uh, I mean, because it's there. Um, vehicle research is cool. Uh, you saw Chris and Charlie just before this. Um, that, that's a really tough act to follow, by the way. Yeah, no, there's nothing, like, nerve-wracking about this at all. Um, but, like, not all of us can afford to brick a car repeatedly. Um, and we, we kind of thought, like, maybe, like, through our like somewhat stunt hacking research, we could like illustrate a point about the current state of like vehicle security and security research. Um, so yeah, the boards. Uh, first up is Boosted. Um, so this was the first one that we got our hands on. Uh, I ignored the Kickstarter because I'm an idiot, and then I paid a bunch more money for it immediately afterwards. Uh, this is my daily commuter. I ride it from Soma to the Mission every day. Uh, it's good for about 35 k's an hour. Weighs six and a half kilos. Uh, can go forwards and backwards. Uh, that, that's 22 miles an hour in Freedom units. And so uh, next up is Evolve. Uh, this one's from an Australian company, which actually would make a lot more sense for you to introduce it. Yep. It's uh, Australian for skateboard. Uh, this one's uh, made, made out of uh, carbon. Uh, like like uh, Richo just mentioned, it doesn't have reverse. It just uh, goes forward and it has brakes. It also has a really interesting quality where uh, since it only has one motor, when you hit the brakes, you tend to pull into traffic. Great design choice. And uh, lastly is uh, this uh, board called the Ego, which is right over there. This is more or less a Chinese knockoff of Boosted. Um, you, uh, it, it's, it's literally as stiff as a plank. Um, so yeah, uh, you've maybe kind of noticed the design trend here. Uh, evidently you make a black board with orange wheels. That's kind of how it's done. Um, so the first board we wanted to talk about today was Boosted. Um, so as I mentioned, it kind of can go forward and backward, has regenerative braking, uh, so if you go down a big hill and hit the picks, you kind of like pick up some of the power that you lost. Uh, it's remote uses Bluetooth, which was kind of interesting to me. Um, and so like I would like to tell you guys a story. Um, so I used to live in Melbourne once upon a time, uh, and I think this booster board has actually been to more countries than any other at this point. Uh, so I was skating around Melbourne one day, and I went through Fed Square, which is just like a notoriously RF noisy environment. Uh, it has like tram tracks, it has this thing called Fed Square, which uh, is, is just like full of various wireless signals in that like it has its own Wi-Fi as well as like every bastard having a phone. There's tram tracks nearby, there's train tracks. It's just really noisy and twice in a row I was like skating along, like ripping along in traffic because I'm an idiot and all of a sudden the board just loses power underneath me and I like fall off and get hurt. Um, and so immediately I was like, I wonder if we can do this like reliably. And so one thing leads to another and as far as we know, this is the only CV that's ever been allocated to a skateboard. <laughs> yeah, I decorated mine. So anyway, uh, like how, how did we get from like me falling on my ass in public uh, to like convincing Mida that it was a really good idea to give us a CV? <laughs> um, it, turns out, it turns out that was actually kind of tricky. Yeah, I mean, that was such an exciting, I, we'll get to that in a bit. Anyway, 
so uh, like I, I had this skateboard and I kind of felt like you know there was something a bit dodgy about his comms. Uh, and I knew it used Bluetooth, but I sort of knew nothing about Bluetooth beyond sort of how to spell it. Um, but I knew this guy, uh, and I knew that Mike like knew a lot of things about Bluetooth. He owns the domain Bluetooth.expert. Uh, and so I thought like, how hard can this be? It'll be like drink a couple of beers with Mike, do some typey typey, probably get a shell by lunch. It'll be fun. So I bought a bunch of Uber teeth. Uber tooths, I'm still not sure what the collective noun is. Um, it's Uber teeth. Anyway. So I, so I bought a bunch of them and I like tried to sniff some packets and it didn't go very well. So I like called Mike and said, hey, how does this work? Yeah, so uh, before this research, Richo knew nothing about Bluetooth. Uh, at this point, he's starting to use the right words, not always in the right places, but he's making some progress. <laughs> but uh, so he purchased some Uber teeth and had no idea what he was doing. So I kind of guided him through the process. And uh, so the way an Uber tooth works, is uh, it's got a microcontroller and a small radio on it that can be reconfigured to uh, talk like Bluetooth, or in this case, Bluetooth Smart BLE. Um, so uh, we we've got some code in the repo for uh, for following connections, uh, hopping along with them, and uh, uh, putting the data onto the PC. So we were uh, we were, we fired these guys up and uh, and uh, got some packets out of it. Uh, so the interesting thing about modern Bluetooth is that its crypto is pretty good. Uh, the interesting thing about this electric skateboard is that they decided not to use it. Go team! Uh, if they had actually used it, everything we're about to show you would have been a lot harder. Uh, so, yeah, that was a poor, poor choice. So, uh, w because of this lack of uh, crypto, we were able to look at the packets directly and uh, start to try to understand how this board worked. So, uh, BLE uses a protocol called GAT. It's a handle, uh, handle wise communication. You can kind of think of it as a key value store. Um, in normally it's like you, you make a request, you get some data back. Uh, that's not actually how they used it. If you, uh, if you take a look at the next slide. So, uh, this is what we first got when we, uh, dumped some traffic, uh, straight off the board. And so this is going to be a little bit hard to see. It's not super important. Um, the part that I have highlighted there is actually the value. Uh, so like in, inside of like a BLE frame, there's like a header and then a product, and you know, there's a bunch of chunks of data. Uh, the value is basically like the payload that gets actually seen at the application layer. Uh, and this one says RC0 21 of 2. Um, that's, that's ASCII. It is ASCII. Everything is ASCII. Uh, it turns out their entire protocol basically just talks ASCII on the wire, which is sort of bizarre for talking to an embedded device. I guess like most people would use like TLVs or just fix with messages, but it turns out like ASCII is awesome because instead of having to like look at these magic numbers and try and work out what they do. Like most of them actually say it right there on the tin. Um, and so we missed a lot of them when we were first trying this, uh, mostly because of the sheer amount of noise that these, uh, this is a throttle packet. Um, because of the sheer number of them, if you're kind of just like spelunking through in Wireshark, it's sort of hard to find anything else. But so we, uh, you know, we drank a bunch of beers and kind of poured over Wireshark for a couple of hours. Um, and we discovered that it talks this simple duplex protocol, um, where the controller sends messages on handle OX1A uh, and it reads the responses back from OX1C. Uh, and so having pulled the board apart and actually just like looked at it, uh, we know that, that this is a blue radio part that basically exposes a serial port over Bluetooth. Um, but, but not an actual Bluetooth serial port, which is a thing that exists and they did not use. So uh, this is like the first batch of messages that we got. Uh, we had like, uh, we, we took like a five minute capture of just like, you know, fiddling with the board a little bit. Uh, the firmware that we did this research on, which was current at the time, uh, has a beginner mode and an expert mode. Uh, in beginner mode, it's not very fun, and in expert mode, it's a lot of fun. Um, but so there's these RC0 messages which let you control the speed, uh, fuel, which lets you ask it how much fuel it has, and it will respond with gauge one through five. Uh, fun fact, we looked at it and we're like, one through five, huh? And we sent it gauge nine, just hoping the thing would crash and we could call it a day. It doesn't do that. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't do anything. Rexpin RBGN for switching between beginner and expert mode. So like this got us as far as like we know the language that the board talks, uh, but like that that didn't get us as close to actually talking to it as we thought we would. So uh, yeah, Bluetooth is actually a little bit complicated if you're trying to do really basic stuff. Uh, so we've got some old school tools for trying to speak Bluetooth. So Ubertooth's uh, transmit support, uh, Richo generously described as minimal. I would describe it as non-existent. <laughs> uh, Blue Z is Linux's official Bluetooth stack. It's uh, it's pretty good, 
uh, but it's it's a, a little bit complicated to do the right thing and actually quite challenging to do the wrong thing. Yeah, Blue Z has this like bizarre fascination with sending like valid packets that actually are as long as it claims they will be and kind of just like doing other things the spec mandates, which isn't very fun. So we uh, we were trying to do some work in this old uh, in this old system, and we realized it wasn't going to work out. So instead, I dusted off some code that I had written uh, in some previous research for fuzzing Bluetooth. Uh, originally, I thought, oh, I'm just going to you know send some data to this Bluetooth dongle and like fuzz like mad. That's how it works, right? Yeah. Just like convert some zeros to ones and stuff. Uh, actually, in the process, I accidentally a Bluetooth stack, and that's PyBT. And so uh, we implemented uh, a bunch of stuff on top of this. And so, uh, I mean, for me, coming in as an outsider and like, I mean, if we're honest, still not knowing a whole bunch about Bluetooth, uh, you know, PyBT was actually like remarkably usable. It, it kind of reads like pretty idiomatic Python that also just like happens to send messages on the wire. And in contrast to when I was like desperately hacking on Blue Z uh, and like the, the inscrutability of whether or not my code was even running uh, <laughs> made PyBT like this kind of like welcome change. So we, we actually sat down, we reverse engineered this protocol and we coded up uh, some PyBT code that could actually talk to the board in the language it wanted to and we successfully spun the wheels. That was a very exciting moment to see it, the wheels spinning up to maximum speed. Because we'd already committed to talk about it at KiwiCon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the wheels continuing to spin even after we hit control C. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, we, we like patted ourselves on the back uh, we're like, great, we can talk to the board. Um, but so the trick is that uh, like Bluetooth will only allow one device to be connected at a time. Uh, and this is problematic because people typically bond the remote to their boards. It's kind of the whole point of the thing. Uh, and so that meant that you know, it wasn't immediately obvious how like given that Mike is riding along in his board, like how do I get control of his, his board and you know, mess with it? So I was like thinking back to getting thrown off at that intersection and I was like, well, you know, obviously there is some amount of noise that if you make it, like, everything stops working. And so I went to Mike, naive as I was, and said, Mike, why don't we just jam Bluetooth? So it turns out jamming... Yeah. It turns out jamming Bluetooth is actually really challenging. Uh, it does a bunch of things... <laughs> We did not kind of consider that outcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is categorically the right response. But so we were thinking about it and we were like, great, we will just like make so much noise that like literally nothing can talk and then like hopefully in the confusion we can like sneak in and do a thing to the board. Um, and so... It's, jamming Bluetooth is not actually that easy. Yeah, so Mike is like, it's not that easy and he maintains that he never said impossible but he definitely said to me that it was, and I quote, literally never going to work. <laughs> So, you know, we kind of did some YOLO science that looked a little bit like this. <laughs> it also looked a bit like this. So this is a spectrum analyzer showing all of 2.4 gigahertz ISM. Uh, ordinary Bluetooth connections are going to use all of the entire spectrum but for very short periods of time. So uh, using a hack RF, we just configured it to shout a bunch of noise in the maximum possible bandwidth that it can, which unfortunately is only limited to 20 megahertz, which uh, math is hard. Is that a a fifth? No, it's a fourth of the spectrum. Yeah. Math. So uh, that didn't work. So we, we uh, Excuse me. Can't that. Hey, how are these guys doing? <laughs> so, you know, I figured it was appropriate because these things have wheels. We also have one of the, the, one of the Tesla crew up here. This is Jeff. Everybody say hi to Jeff. Hi. All right, now I don't know about this shooting Glenn Livett stuff, but we're going to give it a try. Uh, what do we do with new speakers? <laughs> All right. He says that was pretty lame. What do we do with new speakers? <laughs> okay, I, I heard a few other choices out there, but we're just going to do a shot. Thanks. We do not kill the speakers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, to DEF CON. To DEF CON. As you were. Is this, is this your well, then, more. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Right. Mm, yeah, shooting Glenn Livett, nothing quite like it. <laughs> yeah, 
that's theirs. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> no, please give that back. Where's the guy who's riding the skateboard? He really needs okay, a drink. Yeah. yeah, actually, can we get Dominic a shot? Yeah. I think we should okay. get Dominic a shot. I think he needs more than one. <laughs> Everyone meet Dominic. Dominic is probably going to get hurt for your entertainment. Dominic has made some exceedingly poor life choices leading up to yeah, this moment. See Everybody say goodbye to Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Give it up for Dominic. Yeah, it burns. Not, not the good way. Anyway, as we were saying, so we had our, our narrow van, or our officially supported configuration of HackRF doing this. Um, we took the kid gloves off, wrote a little bit of custom firmware to disable some filters and just absolutely scream as much noise as possible. Do doesn't matter, we're trying to do bad things here. That, that also still doesn't work. And so, you know, I was talking to Mike and it was like, it's almost like they literally designed the protocol to stop us from doing this exact thing. <laughs> and Mike was getting really sick of me offering suggestions at this point. <laughs> so, we went back to the drawing board. Um, so I actually had done a little bit of Bluetooth jamming in the past, uh, but it's, it's easy to jam connections as they're being created. It's a lot harder to jam already existing connections, but I was able to, to work on some old Ubertooth code for doing promiscuous mode, recovering connections, and then throw in, sprinkle in a little bit of uh, magic to, to uh, jam those guys, and, uh, and uh, that actually turns out to be quite effective. Uh, but the problem is uh, promiscuous mode works by uh, capturing a bunch of data. Oh man, that scotch messed me up. <laughs> you can do it, Mike. I believe in you. <laughs> so there's a lot of state that you have to recover from the air in order to actually follow a connection. Um, so we have to capture the access address, which is probabilistic and the least reliable part of this process. And then after that, you have to capture the hop interval and the hop increment so you know which channel it's supposed to be on at any given time and what order the channels are traversed in. So we coded this up. And uh, it looked a little bit something like this. Yeah, that's a little. Th this was uh, surprisingly a lot more effective <laughs> than the the previous things. And so, I mean, in case it's not clear, like the the bottom graph, kind of like if you look at its magnitude, like it looks lower than the top. Uh, but specifically it, in that top chart, it's like the red parts is when the radio is like screaming its little heart out. Uh, and the reason that it's kind of like got this stepping pattern is because it's successfully recovered like what what frequency the other radios are on, uh, and then it like just jumps along with it, being like ah. Oh! And then <laughs> no one else can hear anything, and then we win. Which brings us to. Hi, Dominic. I'm still not sure I can ride this thing. Yeah, so no, Dominic's never actually ridden this thing before. <laughs> Wait, is this thing on? All right, so the plan is uh, we're going to set up these three jammers here. Uh, we're going to configure. I, I wrote a REPL for, for the boosted board. Uh, I'm going to wa wait for a hapless skateboarder. I'm going to jam his, his connection. I'm going to connect in the meantime. I'm going to do some stuff to it. Wait, a s I'm not ready yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> so <laughs> then I'm going to slam it into reverse, and then Dominic is going to go flying. Would you, would you like a cigarette, Dominic? Perhaps a blindfold? He says, tell my family I love them. Come on, Dominic, let's do it. <laughs> Man, the demo gods are dicks. We have three for three jamming. Yeah, we tried this so many times in the green room. Come, just keep skating around for a bit. Come a little bit closer. Come on, Dominic. Come, come, come close. Don't be shy. You're being shy. Just go back and then come close. Fuck's sake! Why are you doing this wrong? <laughs> this is very embarrassing. Are we not able to connect? No, it doesn't look like it. Ooh. I hate live demos. I hate them so much. No, just don't hit it. Just instead of hitting it, just turn. Oh, fuck you, demos. I hate demos so much. Yeah, no, this is this is really dissatisfying. Wow. <laughs> All right. 
Come on, go back and forth once more. And then we'll quit and probably drink very, very heavily because this sucks. No, you gotta, you gotta have it. I don't think they're actually coming up cleanly. I agree. I fundamentally agree with you, Mike. This yeah. should be working. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuck it. Let's let's uh, just just pass me the board. I'll just flip it up and do it right close to the thing. Yeah, actually. No, it's actually jammed. That's the problem. Bye, Dominic. <laughs> All right, well that wasn't a roaring success, but we tried. You want to do it on I mean, sure, I don't really care. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about what, uh, <laughs> what was supposed to happen and what actually did. Uh, we've, we've kind of like uh, historically had interesting times trying to jam things in new and RF noisy environments. Uh, when we filmed the thing with Wired, uh, one alleyway worked great, another one totally didn't. Evidently, this alleyway is a lot like the one next to Wired's office. Yeah, it turns out people are using a lot of technology in this room. Stupidly. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. He's got a, he, this is, he was like really serious about using the clicker on this talk. I know, I'm so excited to have this thing, it's amazing. So anyway, so, so we had a demo ready, uh, we actually, we concocted this like new demo the other day, uh, and we weren't sure whether or not DEF CON were gonna let us get away with it, and it turns out they absolutely were not. So as you probably gathered, like one of the problems with this was that you need to be quite close to the rider. You know, if you're too far away, it doesn't stick and you look like an idiot on stage. So we're like, how do we get closer to the rider? Do I need to, there it is. So, uh, <laughs> so we strapped our exploit to a drone. <laughs> and then we, we tethered Mike to the board because we were vaguely concerned about the board winding up over the edge of this hotel. So this is about where we turned on the jammer now. <laughs> and so... <laughs> We, it, it, turn, it turns out strapping a Raspberry Pi and a Bluetooth dongle and three Uber teeth and a whole bunch of other shit to a drone causes some weight issues. So specifically, a drone that uses the 2.4 gig spectrum to communicate with this controller. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not the best idea we ever had. Uh, speaking of, so is Agent X around? Because he told us that like, we couldn't do this because it's crazy. Uh, and it turns out he was dead right. This is a different thing that happened while we're testing this. <laughs> Uh, it's really uh, easy to get people off boards. <laughs> it, it, that was honestly one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen. A, a massive drone with four huge uh, uh, carbon reinforced propellers flying straight at you. So anyway, uh, we reported these bugs to Boosted uh, before KiwiCon last year. Um, we got off to a pretty shaky start with them. Uh, they had never dealt with security researchers before. I sort of hate vendors in general. Um, but they, they were actually really surprised that they weren't using crypto. They were quite sure that they were, and we were like, oh, we are quite sure that you are not. It's <laughs> great. We like took a laptop and we're like, yep, these are packets. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, we did wind up working with them actually quite closely towards the end. Uh, they've implemented a fix. Our exploit doesn't work on a version of the firmware that I assure, I assure you will be available soon. Uh, they published a blog post yesterday saying it'll come out soon. They're just beta testing it. Awesome. We fixed the thing. Go us. Yeah, security research, making the world a better place. Oh, I can't even say it with a straight face. So uh, next on our hit list was Evolve. Um, we didn't bring this one to Vegas because it's huge and unwieldy. So uh, it has a better range than Boosted, mostly because the entire thing is basically made of batteries. <laughs> it, um, it's got this like very odd looking remote that's like, instead of having a thumb trigger, it has an index finger trigger, which it could work if they didn't use a really shitty potentiometer. But you know, it's made of carbon, so that makes it awesome, right? I mean, I used to race motorcycles. I took one look at this thing and I was like, yeah, and I got on it, I was like, hmm. <laughs> so anyway, it's kind of neat. Um, but so, uh, 
a friend of ours lent us a board, which should seem like a rookie mistake by about this point. Um, and it says Bluetooth like in a lot of places on their various marketing material. And we're like super convinced that we're good at this by this point. So I like get home with this board and I like pile a bunch of Ruby teeth on top of it. And I'm thinking like, this ought to be easy. I don't even need Mike. I've learned everything I need to know from that choker. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we had the same harness that we used last time. This is their slightly janky remote. Hooked them up and got exactly nothing. And that made me sad. I love packets. Um, but so I like spent a little while trying to work out whether or not it was just the environment again. Uh, I live in San Francisco in like a giant concrete cube with a bunch of other startup hipsters, all of whom just fucking love Bluetooth things. Um, and so, you know, when, when I was just like sniffing without the board on, there was just like so much noise going past. So by this point, Mike had sort of become desensitized to me giving him bad ideas. Um, and I was like, why don't you come over and we'll like build a Faraday cage and then, you know, we'll just like sniff out of that. It'll be fine. <laughs> so, this is our Faraday cage. It's, it, it's a snowboard box wrapped in a single layer of tin foil. Two in places. The, the terrifying thing is it actually worked pretty well. Um, with the remote inside of the box and the board outside of it, the remote wasn't able to bond with it. Um, and so we were like, great. So we're capturing you know, all this data from inside it. And we're thinking like the Bluetooth ought to be in here somewhere. And seriously, like still nothing, like nothing at all. So we're kind of like puzzling over this for a while. And so uh, I don't know if Moran's actually in the room, uh, but so he, he's uh, our dear friend who lent us a skateboard. And we thought we should probably pull it apart. And it's still unclear if we ever told him we were gonna do this. Um, so hi, Moran, if you're here, we pulled your skateboard apart. Uh, so, so this is the inside of the controller. So we looked up, it's got a, a conveniently labeled RF part on it, and uh, we looked up the name on the data sheet, and it was a little bit bizarre. It was this chip called the NRF24LE made by Do Nordic, and despite having LE in the name, it is not BLE. It is not a Bluetooth chip. Which, like, led me to ask some questions. So, I mean, this is kind of small. This is a bit bigger. This definitely is the word Bluetooth. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had some confusion about this. Um, but so, fuck, I went too soon. <laughs> so it talks this thing called power thirst. Ah! <laughs> Menergy. Uh, no, it actually talks this thing called shock burst. With the trademarks, <laughs> they're actually in the data sheet. Um, and so we were like, uh, okay, this is not Bluetooth. We don't know anything about it. That's weird. Um, so, I mean, we were still at my place uh, hanging out with our Faraday cage, and it was like, so at, at this point, we had also very clearly had too much beer. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we, did, we didn't have a hack RF. Uh, Ubertooth was obviously not going to do us any good. Well, it could have done as good, but not the way they used the chip. And so we, we couldn't fiddle with this radio, but we did have the board pulled apart. And Richo, like, impulse buys shit all the time. Yeah, when, <laughs> so because I work at Stripe, I just buy things that Stripe merchants make for no reason. Um, so I had this alia that I got as far as like sniffing some USB with once and then put in a drawer and never looked at again. Um, so we hooked it up to, to the logic analyzer um, and we like dumped a bunch of traffic and we still got nothing. And we're like, re we looked exactly like that shrug emoji at this point. We just had no idea why we weren't getting anything. Um, kind of an aside, <laughs> don't yell it out because no one likes that guy. But if you come up to us afterwards and you can guess why this thing is strapped to the back of the thing, I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> it appears to be a piece of foil tape. I've asked several different RF engineers what it's meant to be used for and I got several different answers. It's fascinating. So anyway, uh, we didn't get anywhere with the remote and we thought, fuck it, we'll pull the other, part, the other thing apart. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> so, so, we, so the inside of the board is actually a little bit odd. About 95% uh, of the surface area is taken up by battery. And there's this little tiny compartment in here that is just cramped as ridiculous. But we pulled, it, we pulled everything out and we could trace through it. It's a bunch of off-the-shelf parts. Um, curiously enough, the RF module is not in that little compartment there. It is above the front wheel, which kind of makes sense from a design perspective. But it's just a bizarre design. It's, so, it's kind of like they didn't know what they were doing. So they have this video on their website, like, explaining how to, like, fix a flaw in the, like, if your remote isn't bonding pro properly, and it involves sticking tape to stuff. And <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a little unclear, like, what they were doing at the time. 
uh, you know, our, our hunch, given that it says Bluetooth but doesn't have any in it, is that they just shipped it off to a contractor or whatever. So anyway, uh, Shockburst, we like did a little bit of reading on. Uh, it's this like simplex protocol, so it's like the remote yells at the board, and that's kind of it. Um, which is why we weren't seeing much data from the remote, because uh, there was kind of nothing to see. Um, it's not crazy complex, but it does have a nine-member nine bit field in it, just to make everyone who's ever tried to implement a harness for it really miserable. Um, but so, we can't, sorry. so, so we, we we went ahead and looked at this, and we knew we weren't going to be able to use an Uber tooth to poke at it. So instead, we looked at uh, Travis Goodspeed's Next Hope badge, which has the radio version of the NRF chip that was in the remote. And uh, I was looking into this, googling around, trying to figure out how to recover some of this data, and I found out that Travis had already done exactly the thing I was trying to look to do. He also wrote a very thorough blog post about it and had a bunch of code in the GoodFret repos that do exactly the right thing out of the box. So high five Travis for making my job really easy at this point. At this point I cracked a beer for a job well done. Uh, so we, we additionally wrote some code to actually sniff evolve using this, uh, using this device, a little bit of code on top of uh, GoodFet. And um, at some point, perhaps, I will actually send in a pull request for that. <laughs> so like we said, we didn't bring the board to Vegas. Um, we, we, kind of, we came up with this like, workable jamming attack, but it wasn't really that amazing. We kind of figured it wasn't worth like, taking time out of talking about packets and shit. Um, but beyond that, there was sort of nothing to do. The board just like, didn't know how to do enough stuff for it to do mean things to it. Uh, unlike Boosted, which had like, a bunch of like, hidden functionality for us to fuck with, this thing had like, a throttle, and that was it. Um, so we successfully jammed it. We like made one roll down the hill on the contrain. So, hold the mic to your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so that brings <clears throat> us up to the ego, which I mean, if you come up after the talk, you can see that it is. It looks almost exactly like a boosted board. Um, this one, uh, this one also says Bluetooth all over it, and in fact has a smartphone app that communicates with it over Bluetooth. So you'd figure at this point, it's got to be Bluetooth, right? Which means you can probably see where this is going. So, so uh, Richo, Richo pulls out a couple Uber teeth, and and at this point, still doesn't actually know how to use them properly. But it's no shame in that, Mike. <laughs> so he he attempted to sniff it. He didn't see any packets, and uh, we still were just at a loss. What the heck is going on here? So, like the next thing I did was, uh, you know, I, I was attacking the remote because that was kind of like. You know, the, the thing that we're really interested in dicking with was like the default configuration of the boards. Um, but you know, they did say it had this smartphone app. So I downloaded it from the app store onto an I thing, uh, and I like turned it on and it said searching for a device, and like still nothing. And then I was looking at the board and there's this dinky little switch on the side. And I've since lost the grommet, but the grommet on it said BT slash Wi Fi. <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> surely not. <laughs> <laughs> No one would build a, a skateboard that talks Wi-Fi. That would be crazy. So it actually turns out they didn't. Uh, as with all of these things, like they just put words that don't mean the things that are inside the boards on them. Um, so <laughs> I looked at the smartphone app because I was kind of wondering whether or not, like, as the board, I could like dick with people's phones and like exfiltrate their address books and shit. Like that would have been tremendous. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot in there. It does turn out that, that iPhone Bluetooth is crazy hard to jam, though. Yeah, so iPhones uh, uh, talk to the Bluetooth chip and, and tell it to avoid the channels that uh, are being used by the Wi-Fi connection and some of the LTE connections. So uh, they don't use all the data channels and the promiscuous mode jammer that we talked about with Boosted, which worked super well, didn't it, guys? <laughs> uh, that one doesn't even work at all with, with Ego running on iPhone. It's just the, there, there's too many uh, un unfixed variables that you can't recover. So we went back to the remote. Because like it definitely, I mean, like it works. It obviously talks something. Um, so we like had a good look at it, and we we're like, what even does this thing talk? Um, so you know, based on the position of the switch, if it's paired with a phone, it's Bluetooth, and paired with a remote, it's the shrug emoji again. So we like pulled it open as you know, as we want to do, and it, it's we we identified the radio part kinda, except it had the serial number scratched off. Yeah, and it's kind of unclear whether or not this was an obfuscation technique or just like damaged in, in shipping. But so, you know, we, we were at this for a little while, uh, and then we had this like pivotal moment where Mike offered maybe his single handedly biggest contribution to this research. So, uh, th this is a HackerF Porter Pack, uh, which is 
Uh, do you want to explain in a bit more detail? Yeah, the port pack is a shield that sits on top of the Hack RF and it has an LCD and a jog wheel and basically turns it into a handheld uh, radio and for what we used it for is a, a wideband spectrum analyzer. And so uh, we're looking at the trace. I don't know if you can hear this. That's not Bluetooth. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not Bluetooth. <laughs> but so we, we started digging into it a little bit further. And so using the Hack RF in the regular Hack RF mode, we pull the packet off the air and it looks something like this. Uh, and if you, it's kind of hard to see on here, but if you look at it closely, you can see it's uh, FSK. So one frequency for zero, one frequency for one. And we were actually able to do a little bit of GNU radio and uh, demodulate that into something that we could actually look at and count the bits. And so using this, we were able to recover the, um, the FSK offset and the access code used to identify the packets and the bit rate. And so using all that, we could later plug that stuff into something like an Uber tooth so that we could sniff it. Uh, but before we could actually get to this point, we had to fire up GNU radio and connect a bunch of boxes with a bunch of lines. I don't know if anybody in this room has actually used GNU radio, but it's, it's quite difficult to work with, especially if you don't know anything about, about DSP. Kind of felt like this when I was using it. <laughs> but in any case, we could actually, we could actually see the, the packets. We could see how frequently they were occurring. And so we could also, wow, these slides are way out of order. Yeah, you did this. Yeah, this is my fault. <coughs> So we had our, we had. <laughs> hey, do you want this? Yeah, that'd Thank be you. great. Thanks, man. So at this point, we had actually plugged this, all this stuff into the Uber Tooth, and we could sniff individual packets on individual channels. But the the device used, uh, it, it used uh, different channels, and it uh, it, the time between packets on a single channel we could measure, and we could also measure the time between packets on a different channel. So we could try to identify all the channels that it was using, and then we could also figure out the hop. Uh, the hop order between those channels. So first up is this histogram here where I sat on a single channel and waited the, counted the time between consecutive packets using the high resolution timer on the Uber tooth and you can see they cluster very neatly into these buckets that are 44 milliseconds apart. So on a single channel you always get two packets 44 milliseconds apart. And then next up you can s actually see three of the four channels that it uses here and uh, the first packet, the second packet, and the third packet, and it turns out there's 11 milliseconds between those guys. So we had found out that there were four channels that this thing used, and the, uh, the time between the first three channels was 11 milliseconds. Guess what the time between the next channel was? 11 milliseconds. So at this point we had actually black box reverse engineered the way that the protocol hops through the channels, the channels that it used, and actually have some code in, uh, in Ubertooth to do all this. Uh, so I'm, I think this says upstreamed. I'm not sure if we've actually pushed this yet. Uh, we're, we're gonna like get all the code out kind of in the next couple of days coming out of this. Um, so yeah, like once, once we'd re-implement it, we we're like, great. I mean, we, we already know a bunch of stuff about making, making lots of noise with Ubertooths. Uh, like why don't we have a stab at jamming this thing? Um, and so as we mentioned, like this thing doesn't have a reverse, uh, which makes it kind of like. We're gonna talk about the jammer first, Richo. Fine then, Mike. So this is what our jammer actually looks like in practice. You can see uh, the first pack, we, so that jammer works by listening for the sync word of the packet and then instead of sending the data back to the PC, it turns the Uber tooth around into transmit mode and spews out a bunch of data. Then it hops to the next channel, waits for the sync, spews out a bunch of data. And if you do this for a while, after about a half a second, the board gives up and it loses the connection. Sorry. This time it will probably go way better. So I'm gonna spin the wheels here and Richo's gonna drive the jammer. So as we mentioned, the thing doesn't actually like have a notion of reverse, uh, which is impractical because it means we can't throw people off directly like we originally sought out to do. Uh, one thing we can do though. Oh, you have to be shitting me. What happened? Nothing, Mike. <laughs> Nothing happened. Oh. No, it actually, right. it actually at long last. I, I can't, I can't drive it anymore. Exactly. And so finally this thing stuck. Uh, normally it's a lot quicker than that. Uh, but we're able to remotely disable the brakes and the throttle on the board. Uh, you know, meaning that if you, if you just like grab someone on the way past a hill, uh, they're now just on a mechanical spear. Hey, let's run this one again. All right. It works like, it works every time, 90% of the time. Oh yeah? <laughs> All 
Ja. I think that's yours. Hey, we had a slide for that demo. Yeah, no, it's out of order again. Nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, we kind of ran into the same issues that we did with Evolve. Uh, we we looked at it and like it was really fun to dick with, but by virtue of the fact that it, you know its only interface was just like take messages off the wire and pass them to the motors, uh, you know, there, there wasn't a whole lot that we could do with kind of like you know I interfering with other functions of the board. Um, kind of for this reason, it also means that it's extremely unlikely that the vendors will be able to patch against these things. Um, yeah, demo slide. Anyway, so yeah. so right towards the end, uh, we, we were kind of working on this thing, and we thought, like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, there's probably some more stuff in blue in boosted. Um, and you know, since like since the very start of this research, I just wanted a shell on a skateboard. Like, that's the thing that I wanted. Um, so we got to thinking, like, <laughs> what if we could execute remote <laughs> execute arbitrary code on a skateboard? Um, and so we pulled the board apart. We knew that it was using this particular chip. Um, we didn't have much luck trying to find debug ports in the in the first case, uh, but like as we started to dig into it, we we actually found them later. Um, but a couple of months after we like started this research, uh, Boosted released an app, and if you look at the bottom there, it says there's a firmware update available, and we we're like, huh, neat. Um, so we were like, great, firmware update facilities are pretty good. It's probably a good way for us to like just give it some code, have it execute it. Sounds like fun. So we took one of the boards. Uh, we dumped the Bluetooth traffic that was uh, heading between the phone and the board's uh, Bluetooth interface, as well as the HTTPS traffic between them and their backend server with Burp. Uh, and then, kind of stitching this together, we figured we could probably work out both like how to send firmware to the board and what the firmware actually looks like. Um, and so, like a lot of hours later, we'd, we'd finally like stitch together something that looked a lot like a firmware blob uh, from a combination of these two things. Um, and you know there was some sorry there were there were some slightly quirky things about it. The strings had a bunch of weird interior nulls. We got our we got ourselves a list of all the possible things you can do with the board. Interestingly enough, you can get the git revision, ping it, get its current version, the numskull command, our favorite. I worked out what it was finally. It's the number of skill levels it has. But so uh, with this in mind, I, I threw away original exploit uh, and I wrote a full blown REPL for the skateboard uh, that lets you interrogate all of these facilities. Uh, and in doing so, our dear friend Nico also worked out how to unbrick a skateboard when the inevitable happens. Um, so this is where I'm going to throw the REPL up after the talk. But so finally, we wanted to know like how do I actually get new firmware on you? Like that's the that's the key thing that we really wanted to do. Uh, and it winds up being a protocol that looks a little bit like Intel.x. Um, so like this is uh, the the firmware that we unpacked to hex, uh, and this is a Bluetooth packet. Uh, they they're exactly the same bytes. Uh, and just before that, we we discovered these like extra four commands, uh, and so BTLD actually says like give me your firmware. Uh, BBLC like so BBLD accepts a region. BBLC says like give it to me. Uh, BBLR is the the thing that we're really interested in, uh, which is like how do we actually move the blobs around? And SN is just like a sigil for the end of the thing. So we're like, what do we do with this, right? Um, you know, I mean, you could probably do something shitty to a writer. Um, I mostly just like believe in owning my own hardware. I feel like maybe my board should go faster. Unfortunately, at this point, we bricked the board. So we're we're down to one minute. So we're gonna briefly talk about the golf board that uses the exact same stuff and has really hit people writing down golf courses. We didn't get a chance to hack one of these because it was really inconvenient for us because neither of us actually plays golf. But it would be interesting to play with these. I want someone else to do it, basically. <laughs> someone else should hack a golf board. So throw out some greets and thanks. Thanks to Nico, who like did, did a lot of great stuff for us, uh, helped us out with the hardware and the drone. Marine for poorly choosing to lend us something and then having us take it apart. Jared Boone, who helped us out with the, the hack uh, with the porta pack in the eleventh hour, and Safe Hex, who is welcome to come up as they're escorting us off the stage for running over time. And finally, Boosted. yeah. So I I really want to shout out Boosted especially um, for being like both great to work with in the sense that they didn't. Try to ruin us financially, uh, but also that they uh, like were extremely cooperative, listened to us, and then like subsequently implemented a fix. Um, and, and if you're going to buy an electric skateboard, buy a boosted board. <laughs> so uh, finally, this is kind of like what you know the, the the stuff that we worked on. We're releasing everything. Uh, it'll be up in the next couple of days, uh, and we'll tweet the links to these slides and to all the resources. You dropped your clicker, Richo. I did again. Thanks for having us.